I was working on a picture in the south of France, and suddenly there's a phone call from Stanley uh, that he's doing this picture. Uh, Barry Lyndon, very economically, he said, you know, I'm shooting it all on location, and I think it would be just right for you. Also, you've done too many studio pictures and so on. But, he said, I can't pay you your money. And I wasn't making a lot of money at the time. So I said, uh, Stanley, be my guest, you know. <laughs> and he said, well, I will, I'm, I'm afraid I'll have to take the next big production design. You know, I said, okay. I went back where we were staying in the South of Van and said to Letitia, my God. Thank God I got out of this, you know, because I was really frightened. And then four weeks or five weeks passed, another phone call from Stanley. Now it's a quite different Stanley. It could be like a little boy on the phone, you see. And he said, Ken, for some reason or another, the second best production designer didn't seem to know what I want, and uh, you really have to do this picture. And your fee is no problem, and all this and all this and all this and all this. And, and in the end, he talked me into it. I never felt comfortable. And there were several reasons. Uh, a, I did not believe that doing a period picture all on location was the sort of settings we needed, big country houses, uh, would be more e economical than building parts in the studio and then using if you have a great interior location, use it by all means. And the other reason was that uh, I felt very uh, concerned about Stanley's idea of shooting at all on location because he had just done the Clockwork Orange and he had received the most horrifying hate mail that I've ever seen. And uh, he wouldn't t even talk, discuss it with his family, but he discussed it with me. And uh, I mean, it was unbelievable, you know. If I know somebody who had a gun license on them. And then he said, but you know, I've thought about it, but if somebody wants to kill me, they have the advantage. So forget the gun lines and so on. But so I thought, how am I going to get them out on location in any case? And um, I didn't. We had a young, about six young photographers, including a, a niece of mine who had a um, Leica or something. And he, we had made the garage at um, Borum Bud, where he was living, into a miniature war room with ordnance survey maps all over, little flags, you know, and radius starting, five mile radius around the house, ending up with a 40 mile radius. And um, he used. I think every excuse not to go out on location because these kids, they only got one page of script or something, so they didn't even know what they were shooting. And Stanley's argument to me was, you never know what's around the corner. <laughs> you know? I said, come on, Stanley, but I, the major locations A, are all uh, you know, written about, know about. 
I know Hatfield is there and this and that and so on. So I think we spent four or five months just working out of his house and the miniature ballroom and with our kid photographers. And each night we had a screening. And uh, I felt like a sort of unwanted uh, uh, teacher because I didn't know 18th century. And every time Stanley saw something Victorian, he said, that I like. And I said, that you can't shoot because it's Victorian. He said, what's Victorian? I said, the wallpaper is Victorian. Prove it to me. I mean, these sort of discussions. <laughs> And uh, in the meantime, he collected every book and material on the period and eventually became a great expert. He decided to go to Ireland. And within 24 hours, I was in Ireland, and he treated the whole unit like it was Rommel in the desert. We all had to have our VWs, you know. My drawing board was fitted across the back of a VW. <laughs> and uh, looking for locations. Well, we had Irish locations, so that made sense. But it didn't stay there. Then he wanted me to find the German locations in, in Ireland, the French locations. And I was going and I was driving this bloody Volkswagen all over with my cameras and so on and being chased by what I thought were cows, <laughs> were bulls, you know, but I'm not a countryman and so on. And then Stanley was, I mean, he, he enjoyed it in a way, but um, um, we really didn't know what we were shooting every next day. And um, he was also writing, rewriting pages, because he thought he could shoot Thackeray like it was written. And I told him, you know, I think, uh, and he couldn't shoot Thackeray as it was written, so he was rewriting script pages, and he never gave more than a couple of pages to everybody who was looking around. And uh, and also we did, you know, he was so, he remembered some of my photographs on a mountain track the Comoro Mountains. And he said, Ken, that was fantastic looking. We're going there tomorrow with the unit. I said, Stanley, you know, it's a track. And when you get 40 vehicles or 30 vehicles going up that mountain track, if anything comes the other way, we're in trouble. He said, who gives a shit? Let's do it. You know? And that was his attitude, you know. And in fact, what happened, we went up that mountain track. And on the way back, you know, to, to turn around was a big problem. On the way back, suddenly the sky opened up with a sort of Goya skyscape and something. We got um, the German actor whose name now uh, escapes me, um, Harry... Hardy Kruger. Yeah, Harry Kruger. Uh, out of his car, onto a horse, and uh, we shot the scene there. And it, it is a fantastic looking scene, so, you know, how could you argue? The sad part of it, and I don't want to go into too many details, I was losing more and more resistance, and because I had that incredibly close relationship with Stanley, I started taking all his 
mistakes or which I thought were, uh, you know, reckless decisions on my shoulders and sometimes going to the actors and apologizing, you know, which had nothing to do with me, but was, was, was Stanley. And also what happened, I was trying to find these locations, it wasn't only English locations, it was also Irish locations and French locations and German locations, all in, in a little bit of Ireland, you know. And I found that he liked the location, but when the scene didn't work, I had to find a different location. So I was really getting completely exhausted. And you know what he did, of course. Uh, he said to me one day in, in the car, what would happen if I closed down the production for six weeks? What would Warners do? And we get our act together more and so on. I said, well, you would probably be the only director that I know who would get away with it. And that's what he did. He closed down, fired everybody except me to get the act more together. But by this time, I was... Letitia came to, to, to visit me from... The, and she was seriously concerned, and you know, we were very close to the Kubricks in any case. Danny spent so many evenings here, and the teacher said, you know, Ken is not well. And he said, well, I think you're right, but whatever you do, get him treated by, get him the right sort of uh, medical attention. I went back to London, and of course, then I cracked up, and uh, had some psychiatric treatment in the hospital for some time. And I was getting better, but Stanley tried to ring me every day and letting me know that he did the locations I had chosen, that he was going to do this and that and so on. And he was obviously also very concerned about me. And the only funny situation that I finally, and, and, and the psychiatrist said to me, Ken, you will never get better unless I can uh, cut this uh, umbil umbilical cord between you and Stanley. And finally, I get home. I go. I'm somewhat. Nitita got a chauffeur to collect me in the rolls, you know. I, and 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 uh, the doctor you were talking about was my doctor. My he was very bright and a very good doctor. You know. And that's a phone call, <laughs> and it's Stanley on the phone. And he says, Ken, I'm so pleased that you are well again. And you know all the things you wanted me to do, that you wanted me to send a second unit to Potsdam near Berlin to get some atmosphere. I said, yes, I remember all that. And he said, I've decided you are going to direct it. <laughs> that gave me such a shock. But the next day I was back in the clinic. I mean, now I can laugh about it. But he didn't see it that way at all, you know. But you won an Oscar for it. And I won an Oscar for it, yes. That was, yeah. And he was very pleased about the Oscar. And of course I was pleased, you know, even though... I felt, my God, you know, I nearly lost my life, but 